So in high school, I read a lot of Shakespeare in English AP, right? And one line that sticks out to me right now is to repot or not to repot? That is the question. Hi guys, it's Melissa from Tasteful Nodes, your plantita abogada, making kulit to you again with a new video. Today's subject of the video will be um, what to do when you get your new plant home. Let me get started with plantita's disclaimer, okay? Number one, I'm not to be used as an academic resource, okay? If I do ever mention any um, facts, or figures, government figures, I'll go ahead and make sure to put that little uh, line across the bottom of the video just so that in case you need to refer to anything, you don't have to refer back to me. You can refer back to um, the official factual data. Number two, KKB tayo, meaning kanya kanyang bayad. I won't be responsible for any plant child support that may result from things that you adopt from this video. Plants are alive, okay, we know that much. We know they're not chicharon when we first get them. Um, but also plants are an investment. So given the plantdemic right now, it is so expensive. So let's go ahead and say that if you do wanna try anything from here, um, I'm not gonna be responsible for it, okay? These are my experiences or experiences of other people that I've tried for myself and at, you know that they actually worked. Which leads me to disclaimer number three. Get a second opinion. Um, like I said, these are investments. Um, not only do we invest money in it, but we also invest our time in our plants, right? So we wanna make sure that whatever information you find online, because not everything online is true, right? Um, whether it be from me or from anyone else, make sure that the information that you gather actually applies to your personal situation. So the information I'm sharing with you today is actually information that applies specific to me, to my growing conditions, to my watering conditions, to my microclimate, all the way to my potting mix. So do me a favor, and if you know we're in similar conditions, great. If we're not, um, get a second opinion and see what will actually work for you. Okay, those are my disclaimers. Don't sue me. Now, we've all been there where we go to a store or we search online, we see something we like and we buy it. We're so excited to get it and bring it home. And when we get home, what do we do? You know, um, it used to be that people would say, don't repot the plants, let it acclimate. I don't quite agree with that for a few reasons that we'll get into, but um, what I first do when I get a plant, whether, well, no, let's go ahead and say it's online because most of my purchases are now online. One of the first things I do is I repot. I repot for a few reasons that we'll get into shortly. Let me go ahead though and give you a rundown of the materials that we're gonna need for this video, okay? I'm pregnant. <laughs> and while I don't mind getting my hands dirty most of the time, um, I'm responsible for another living being. So I need to make sure that I protect him as well. Keep your gloves handy, okay? If you don't like, if you don't like germs, if you don't, if you have any reason to, you know, have a, a need to protect yourself, autoimmune conditions, um, or if you're pregnant, please, please, please use gloves. Otherwise, I would say, yeah, go ahead and use your bare hands. I personally like feeling the texture of my potting mix in my hands. I'll wash my hands really well afterwards and disinfect, but we can't take that chance right now, right? So, gloves is on my list. I also keep a pair of gardening shears or scissors because um, you never know what you're going to find inside the pot. Along those lines, I also keep rooting hormone nearby within reach. So I have powder and I have gel rooting hormone. 
Um, whatever works for you, please keep that close by. Um, you will probably need it based on my maybe 50% of my experiences here. <laughs> uh, yes, I've been the victim of Tusok Gang in the past, so. Keep some water nearby. I, when I'm repotting, I like to keep water that has been, that has a few drops of HB 101 in it, which is a soil conditioner. Keep your potting mix nearby, your favorite potting mix, something that you use and something you know works for your area. Absolutely. Keep your pots nearby as well. Okay. Okay. I also have a, a little container to catch the potting mix from my plant. Now, with all that being said, I got this beautiful, beautiful um, variegated philodendron gold, philodendron green emerald. Okay, I was gonna say golden dragon for some reason. I don't know why. Hello, it's not a golden dragon. This is a beautiful variegated philodendron green emerald. Um, we call it philodendron temptation here as well. But as you notice, we've got temptation leaves over here and green emerald leaves over here, meaning, yes, it's the same thing, just at different stages um, of growth, right? Uh, they'll all end up like this eventually, like these guys eventually, rather than this. But I got this great plant um, from a trusted seller of ours. It's Kutko Garden. Um, they're located in Cabanatuan. They're fantastic. We've purchased from them before and we're really happy with our purchases. Um, pero ang sa akin, like I said earlier, I like to repot and there's a reason for that, no? A lot of times our microclimates are different. I live in an area here in Tarlac actually, the Tarlac province in the Philippines, which is considered to have a microclimate of tropical savanna, meaning um, given the two seasons that we have, rainy and summer, the summer season is just hot, dry, and miserable, oven-like, right? The summer, uh, the winter season, the rainy season, is a little tamer. It's still hot, um, but at nighttime, temperatures can drop down to 21, 20. So that's high 60s in Fahrenheit. Not good for um, plants whose potting mixtures hold a lot of water to be in, you know. Um, I water until the water comes out of the pots, the bottom of the pots, so that's how heavy I water. Um, it's really dry here and it's really important for me to keep doing that for my plants. A lot of times, and Kutko actually has a beautiful mix. I like their mix. Um, it's just not meant for me, I guess. But it's quite, it's quite uh, moisture retentive. So it's good. It's good in a place that doesn't have our overnight temperatures or um, our, gosh, I guess the tendency, a climate that has a tendency to provide rot, right? These are the conditions for that. You have hot and dry during the day. Your roots or your soil mix will dry out, right? So you water when the soil is dry, then all of a sudden your mixes hold water and retain the water and waterlog your roots and you'll have root rot. So we don't want that here in Tarlac. And uh, just to prove, okay, got a little bit. Pretend I haven't even wrung it dry yet, but yeah, so it won't work for me. It probably works really, really well for their area because they provide great plants for me. But it just won't work for my area, so I know I have to repot. And that is why point number one is repot your new plants in potting mixes that you know will work for you. Um, if your mixes are similar to Kutko's, absolutely. You know, keep this plant in its pot and let it acclimate, right? I would leave it. But if it's not, <clears throat> if your potting mixes for your other plants are not similar to this, uh, it's probably best to go ahead and repot. Since it's still acclimating to begin with, repotting it will just add maybe a day or two for it to acclimate as well. 
for your potting mix, especially under the conditions that you have, where you're gonna be watering and caring for them the same way. So you want it to acclimate to the care and the conditions that you have here. Not so much that it arrived to a new place. It's not like we're shipping it from Sweden all the way to the Philippines where it has to acclimate in terms of temperature. We want to go ahead and repot. And see, it's a beautiful, beautiful mix, quite loose. Quite good, yay. Which brings me to point number two, right? You want to examine your plant while you have this out. Um, oh, wow. Ah, yay, okay. Holy cow. So they are the gift that keeps on giving. I have one, two, two visible growth points, and I have a third one right here that's completely white. I don't know if it's gonna survive, but dang. Yay, jackpot. When I say examine your plants, I don't necessarily mean <laughs> examine how many plants you have um, on, growing. What I do mean is examine your roots. Examine your root system, right? Um, I see gorgeous white roots. I don't see any blackening. I don't see any strings. This root rot, when you, when you pull out a root, the sheath comes off and all that's left is a string. Yeah, that's root rot for you. And I don't see any of that here, which is fantastic. So that would be the reason number two, right? Is I wanna check the roots. But reason number three kind of goes along with that as well. Reason number three for repotting is because I wanna see what the seller has sold me. If this wasn't Kutko, you know, I don't know if I'd take this video to be honest. I think I would be very, very afraid because I wouldn't know what to expect. And earlier, let me put this down here. Earlier when I mentioned that I've been the victim of Tusok Gang. So for those not in the know, you know, if I have any Westerners watching, Tusok Gang are sellers, people who actually um, cut off a plant Tusok, meaning, um, what is tusok? Poke? Poke? Poke it in the soil, make sure it's in a potting mix, and sell it as a fully acclimated, well-rooted plant. So that's a tusok gang, right? Are those people who do that? And I've been victim to that as well. And it's incredibly annoying and incredibly unethical to be selling a plant that you say is well-rooted because, you know, people put time in into that and effort and resources therefore there's a higher price versus a cutting where you literally just cut it off the plant if it's a cutting you should be selling it at the price of a cutting whatever the price of that particular plant is sell it at a cutting price right don't sell it at an acclimated well-rooted plant um, price it's unethical and it's not right and i've been victim to that much too long and the third point is, now is the time for you to get back to your seller if you are a victim of Tusok Gang and say, hey guys, so you sold this to me as a well-rooted, acclimated plant. Not the case. Try to go ahead and resolve it with them. Um, many times they will resolve it with you because they don't want the reputations to be ruined. Um, sometimes you're dealing with resellers, resellers who, who don't repot the plants, who just literally take it from one place and sell it to another. So there are, other, there are many conditions under which a seller would not know that a plant isn't rooted and would be willing to pay back, right? To refund or replace. I wouldn't mind replacements either. But. In cases where you do have sellers who are adamant that no, that is a perfectly rooted plant, even though it's just one aerial root, an aerial root is not a rooted plant. An aerial root will not survive without more growth, more root growth from it, which is why I keep these guys near me when I repot, right? I don't know what to expect. If the plant is worth it, I would just go ahead and use rooting hormone. I prefer the powder over the gel, um, especially now that it's cold, but the gel works well in the summer. 
But if it's not worth it, man, I, you best believe I will be getting my money back, right? We will have this resolution one way or another. If you can't get a resolution, there are Facebook pages. Um, one that I could think of off the top of my head here in the Philippines is um, Philippine Buyers and Sellers Issues Legit Check and Scam Alert. They're on Facebook. I know it's a long name and I'll flash it at the bottom, but they are a great resource to go to in case you ever need to research um, a plant seller or in some cases a plant buyer, okay? Um, if you're selling your propagations. So research their reviews, um, a good place to get resolution, a good place to be in contact with other people who've been in the same position with you, um, with the same seller. So it's a good place to check. It's a good place to post if you cannot come to a resolution with your, with your seller at that point. Now, those are my three reasons for repotting immediately, right? Um, a side note to that, since I'm here, the pots that I use are either the clear or the black. Um, they're really well uh, draining, because like I said, I water until waterfalls come out of the, <laughs> of the pot. You know, I water like there's no tomorrow, but I water only when I'm sure that the soil is drying up. That's how well I know my potting mix. Um, I use the clear pots when I'm dealing with newer plants whose roots I want to watch. Um, I use the black pots when I'm dealing with more developed older plants that I know are fine, good to go. Some people say um, that, that the roots don't like being um, exposed to sunlight and you know, I think I see the same thing with my plants, which is why I have them in a shaded area. There's no direct sunlight here at all. Um, so take that into consideration when you get your pots. So that's it for today, guys. I'm gonna finish repotting my gorgeous new plant boodle of 2022, the variegated philodendron um, green emerald or temptation. And I'll see you next time. So keep your nodes classy and tasteful. Bye guys. And I didn't use my gloves. Bad milk.